Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. In my last class, I reminded that this will be the last closing chapter of uh, Bibliology and Canon. I also reminded that, Lord willing, from the next class, we will pick up Bible interpretation as our topic. And as a preparation, I had given three questions. Let me touch those questions first to generate some interest. I had asked, how many years did Noah take for building the ark? Somehow there is some passage where God says that his age shall be 120 years. And everybody jumps to the conclusion that Noah built the ark in 120 years. That is not the way to interpret the Bible. Bible interpretation is to be done far more carefully. Many of you send me answers privately. Some of them, some of you were right in the first instance itself. But when I pointed, others said 120. And when I pointed, I asked them to examine the Bible, all of them, or almost all of them corrected and said, no, there is no evidence that it was 120. The exact time is not mentioned in the Bible. That is exactly what I wanted you to understand. That is the way Bible is to be interpreted. I asked how many wise men and many of you wrote that three because three items were presented. Uh, when I got married, we got a dozen thermos as presentation. Does it mean that uh, only a dozen people came for the wedding? No. In total, we may have uh, obtained uh, I don't remember, it's 40 years ago, anywhere between 30 to 50 or even more items. Does it mean that there were only 30 people in the wedding? No. So the number of items doesn't mean anything. The exact number is number of wise men is not mentioned in the Bible. Please remember that. Then I asked, is there a verse in the Bible which says without remission, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. This verse is very, very popular with preachers. Actually, this verse was brought to India, not by the Bible, but by British preachers who have thoroughly misguided us in many areas of biblical interpretation. There is no verse in the Bible which says that without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The verse is, according to law, almost all things are purified by blood and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Here, remission is a hinting at purification of things in tabernacle. And even this verse is, according to, to the law, almost all things, not everything. So, while the shed blood of Christ is very important, this verse does not speak directly about the shed blood of Christ. So, I mentioned, I gave these three questions mainly to point out that we are very hasty in interpreting the Bible. Let us not do that. The Bible itself contains hundreds upon hundreds of verses which show how to be, how the scripture is to be interpreted. And uh, there are some very enterprising students in our midst. So uh, let me give you a suggestion. Start marking your Bible. And wherever you see a Bible verse related to Bible interpretation, just put B-I. Bible interpretation, and eventually you will have hundreds upon hundreds of verses 
related to bible interpretation just collect them and you have a a uh, very nice guide on bible interpretation you may say well brother that is difficult we may not have time okay in that case uh, please listen to my classes from the next tuesday onwards where these hundreds of verses have been collected sifted sorted and on the basis of that i will be presenting these classes in my last class i had mentioned that tens of thousands of manuscripts related to the bible are available in fact the total number of manuscripts is now approximately 50000 old testament and new testament together 50000 and today in the closing class i want to show some of these man manuscripts to you last week i introduced the dead sea scrolls which were produced around 400 bc thousands of scrolls and fragments have been found purchased at very big cost very very big cost and they are now uh, i'm i'm talking only about dead sea dead sea scrolls and now they are housed in an underground bomb proof vault by the israel government and you can see an exactly identical copy on the surface so identical that a lot of tour operators they were uh, claiming and they believed that this was original but this is a picture of the original isaiah scroll the scroll is very long the picture only picks up a few portions starting from dead sea we have lot many scrolls just a minute uh screen sharing at times can become a pain okay now let me start again okay yes this is isaiah scroll this is part of what is known as the nash papyri a collection of four papyrus fragments dating from two 100 bc that's a that's very old please remember they were produced 200 years before the time of christ and this way there are lots of them let me show you some of these here is what is known as aleppo codex it contains almost all of the old testament and it is one of the most accurate copies of the old testament you may say what do you mean by most accurate we thought that all copies were accurate please remember when a document is hand copied then in spite of all precautions here and there some mistakes of spelling and similar things can creep in but god has given us so many manuscripts that comparing them with each other we can easily detect where an unintentional error has crept up and uh, towards the end of these pictures i will show you something very interesting related to my name in hindi to make this matter more clear this is known as a damascus keter there were uh, families of people there were schools of theology and scribes who specialized in copying the old testament and uh, this damascus keter 
was produced by a group like that which specialized in copying the bible and many many copies are available this is a black and white photograph of what is known as leningrad codex exactly what a codex is i explained last time codex is a manuscript in book form and codices became possible and common only after very thin leather known as vellum became available and from that time we onwards we have a lot of codices where thin leather known as vellum written on both sides is available this is a page from michigan codex and this is a cover of michigan codex you may ask brother why are you showing fragments of pictures uh i am trying to use those pictures which are in public domain public domain means where anybody can reproduce them in reproduce any of these unfortunately the world of archaeology is dominated by theological radicals they do research on bible but they don't believe that bible is the word of god and a lot of these manuscripts and pictures are in their control why because radical bible colleges and radical christian organizations they have a lot of money bible believing bible colleges bible seminaries they don't have an equivalent amount of money so a lot of these pictures even today they are copyrighted by theological radicals who mercilessly suppress reproduction of these pictures because if these pictures are reproduced freely people will believe in the bible and radicals don't want people to believe in the bible so that was uh, michigan codex now let me show you something this is a synagogue known as ben ezra synagogue it had a big storehouse where crumbling manuscripts of the old testament could be deposited because they would not burn it and they kept on depositing for centuries and finally when scientists became interested in those manuscripts they started searching in synagogues and they found out that there are more than 6 lakh manuscripts or fragments in the synagogue out of these more than 10000 manuscripts and fragments are related are copies of the old testament god has made a vast amount of information available and the more we study canon the more amazing it is as to how old books produced by the greatest philosophers they have become lost and we have only copies which are produced a thousand or thousand two hundred years after the original was written and here just let me give me a moment yes fine thank you uh, when i share the screen the admins find it difficult to give entry to people and that is why i paused it for a moment um more than 6 lakh were found here not over in mount sinai 
and i am sure every christian knows about mount sinai there is a monastery monasteries are places established by catholics where monks or similar people live all their life this monastery was known as saint catherine's monastery once a scholar a great scholar by the name of constantin von tischendorf visited this monastery and to his surprise he found a very big manuscript so he asked one of the monks there to show it to him he had a look at it and von tischendorf suddenly realized that so far this is the oldest biblical manuscripts which scholars have seen and he asked the monk to give the manuscript to him immediately the monk realized that he can make a lot of money and he said no after much pleading he gave one or two pages which tischendorf took away and then showed it to the scholarly world and then the scholarly world raised in rupee they raised millions of rupees to buy the entire manuscript but by that time a lot of pages were sold to others eventually all those pages were found out in the black market and they were all put together and this is that codex it is known as codex sinaiticus because it was found in the sinai area this is again one of the most important manuscripts of the bible then i am sure you all know about what vatican vatican has one of the biggest libraries in the world and it has some of the most ancient possible manuscripts one scholar once when he was doing some research found a very ancient manuscript and he realized that it was a manuscript of the bible he brought this to the attention of a lot of scholars and then many scholars pleaded with roman catholic church to give them permission to examine and study this manuscript they did not give it finally they gave permission to one scholar but with one condition it was conditional and the condition was when you go inside you will be searched when you come outside you will be searched no pencil no pen and you can watch it and somebody will be watching you all the time and this way you can study it for a few months what would you do with an ancient manuscript if all what you can do is watch it for a few hours a day you cannot take pen you cannot take paper and on top of that he found that this was an amazing manuscript on the left side was uh, one language it is greek capital greek on the right side was latin do you know what he did he started memorizing a portion from the greek a por an identical portion from latin every day he would go home and write it down and in this way within the allocated time he produced a vast portion of that codex sinaiticus he published it there was such a commotion such a scandal in the scholarly world against the roman catholic church that finally the roman catholic church 
released this document for public study and codex it is known as codex vaticanus it has become one of the most important manuscripts of the bible and here i want to remind you bible has the old testament and new testament have always been available to people and it is the roman catholic church which has always suppressed it wherever and whenever they came into power including india please remember the british who ruled in india they did not come to evangelize india they were roman catholics they came to plunder india and uh, most of you have no idea of how much they plundered from india but i'll come to that only when we study church history not finished yet this manuscript looks strange there is a lot of writing and overwriting isn't it uh there is a reason there was a queen who loved reading sermons of a, a preacher known as ephraim so father ephraim was always looking for um vellum on which he could write his books and once when he was short of vellum he found a manuscript he erased it it is easy to erase handwritten ink so he erased it and wrote his sermon on it this manuscript it was available in one of the libraries and once when a scholar was studying this manuscript suddenly by some mistake he raised the paper and there was light coming from behind it and he realized that well this is not the original manuscript the original was something else it was erased to write these messages of ephraim and he started studying the original it was the great scholar tischendorf and tischendorf immediately realized that the original was a manuscript of the bible which was far more older than uh, ephraim's work this see how horrible he made it this manuscript eventually was known as ephraim rescriptus it means ephraim wrote over it but archaeologists have techniques to recover such texts and using such scientific techniques they have recovered almost all the original text in ephraim rescriptus here is another picture of tischendorf tischendorf has been one of the greatest uh, scholars in old testament and old testament manuscripts sinai area was very popular for christian monks and therefore a lot of manuscripts are produced in that area this is known as a uh, sinaitic syriac syriac or what is in kerala known as suriani is an is an ancient language and uh, the scripture was copied into syriac at a very early stage the new testament was uh, copied into syriac as soon as it was written into various dialects of syrian syriac this manuscript is almost contemporary with the new testament and it is known as sinaitic syriac not done this is a very ancient uh translation known as peshitta old testament and new testament and uh, more than 250 old testament peshitta are known and almost all of them are contemporary with the first century church finished no actually i am giving you only the 
only some of the most uh, uh, important and interesting ones here is an amazing papyrus there is a place in egypt known as oxyrhynchus and there people were looking for gold and precious stones and once they opened an ancient building all what they got was crocodile mummies lots and lots of cro crocodile mummies they were disappointed and they started removing the mummies and found there was a door behind the room in which crocodiles were kept and they thought there will be a lot of uh, riches there while removing the crocodiles one of the men trip fell down and the crocodile broke open and to their surprise it was stuffed with manuscripts papyrus manuscripts lots and lots of them a vast amount of information about greek and bible and a lot of other things they were available in these manuscripts since they were found at oxyrhynchus they are known as oxyrhynchus papyri papyri being the plural of papyrus this one is another it was it is a collection of 22 papyri and known as bodmer papyri they are known as bodmer papyri because a very rich man by the name of martin bodmer purchased them you may say why should uh, uh, why are riches important please remember whether biblical or non biblical ancient archaeological manuscripts and monuments they are sold at a very high price by those people who discover it till recently there were no rules the rule was finders are keepers this rule ma was made by the british empire because the british empire controlled almost all the habitable world for more than 200 years and for 200 years they looted every possible thing everywhere to make looting easy they made this practice finder keeper that is how they broke open buildings pillars so many things from egypt those tall towers known as obelisks they cut them at the base and in ship they ship to england where people erected it in front of their houses to show that they are rich affluent aristocrats that's why biblical manuscripts when they come to the black market and they come only to the black market they can be purchased only by the super rich but the lord raised a lot of super rich people including bodmer whenever they found any of these manuscripts they purchased it at whatever cost possible and in this way they have enriched study of the bible another one is codex washingtonensis or the washington manuscript it is a collection of the four gospels not finished yet here is another one my favorite chester bt papyri uh, it was uh, um it's a collection of a uh, uh, large number of papyrus codices acquired by another very rich man in 1930 when the british were looting and the natives found that since the british are looting we can also loot and sell in black market chester bt was a multi millionaire and he purchased a lot of lots and lots of these manuscripts it became known as the chester bt collection this way i can go on for hours after hours day after day showing you pictures of these manuscripts but what i have shown is sufficient 
to remind to bible believing people that god has kept so many manuscripts of the old testament and new testament intact that today we have more than 50000 manuscripts and fragments for study and the more they study the more they are amazed at the accuracy with which the bible has been preserved and here i want to answer a question which you may have brother why should we worry about all this right there is no need to worry but the 20th century has brought up a lot of people who attack the bible they go to our children tell them that your holy book is full of error and our children ask us they ask us to show proof that's why these scholars are laboring day and night to discover these ancient manuscripts to establish that what we have is accurate one of these men who attacked the um he he was in south africa based in south africa uh, i'm not able to remember his name suddenly uh, he has published a lot of books and distributed them in india one of his books claims that there are 1 lakh errors in the bible 100000 errors in the bible and these books are distributed free of cost and picking up from these books a lot of muslim apologists they have been spreading these lies worldwide that there are 1 lakh errors in the bible please remember the english bible has only 8 lakh words if in a bible made up of 8 lakh words if there are 1 lakh errors that means every word in the bible is erroneous is there anyone here who has felt that uh, what we are reading from the bible it is beyond understanding if every word is in error it would be beyond understanding it is so such an outrageous and stupid claim but a lot of people believe it because many times we christians fail to provide these proofs to our children do you know how they claim that the bible has 1 lakh errors let me give you an example this is my name it can be written in many ways in hindi language i'm sorry but uh, i hope you can see the whole of it uh, when we share a picture there is definitely a problem with layout a uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 my name in hindi can be written in seven ways minimum when biblical manuscripts were copied names common in that region spelling see the this is my own name but the spelling is different a good example would be when lord jesus talked about jonah the new testament says jonas the old testament says yona english bible says jona uh, the correct greek pronunciation is yona in new testament yona became jonas in this way when biblical manuscripts were copied just as we make adaptation in translations in each region they used the spelling that was common in that region so if the name johnson comes in one bible verse and if there are seven different copies with seven spelling they would count it as seven errors 
and if there are a hundred manuscripts they would claim there are 700 errors these are not errors these are variations of spelling which is very very common according to region what i wanted to tell you was that people who attack the bible they have been making false claims in the name of the bible but unfortunately we have sold our birthright like esau we have sold our birthright to theological radicals muslims attack the bible rationalists attack the bible atheists attack the bible even christian backsliders attack the bible do you know why because these people do not like biblical morality they do not like the idea of biblical separation so they use a strategy which has been used in courts of law to defend guilty people not to defend innocent people to defend guilty people and the method is show that the witness is unreliable so they want to repeatedly claim to us that the witness of the bible is false and for that they give a lot of references look at uh, spelling variations look at this 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 well variation of spelling is a very common thing when a book is published in one region and the other region we know today uh, we who use computers and word processors we know that american spelling is different from british spelling and when we use a word processor it asks us do we want american spelling do we want british spelling i prefer american spelling because they have simplified it but then when i say neighbor n e i g h b o u r is british spelling american spelling doesn't have u it say, just says b o r these are not errors these are uh, regional variations and since bible was copied for use worldwide names were adapted according to region just as bible translations are adapted to different languages and regions but please remember in india theological radicals have been able to take over because in india most of the conservatives are in congregational churches and in congregational churches since there are no pastors since there is no hierarchy since there is no bishop everybody tries to suppress others everybody tries to suppress others and to suppress our own brothers and sisters people in congregational churches have found out a good method do you have a degree in theology yes from where brother in bible institute oh, 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 oh it is not a university i have a degree from serampur university have you heard it several brethren preachers have come and claim to me i have degree from serampur university i always tell them okay let us do it this way you are talking about indian universities isn't it yes uh i have a minimum of 3 degrees from an indian university jiva ji university bachelor's masters and doctorate i will show those degrees to you each one of them says jiva ji university and you show me your degree which says serampur university then they start making a lot of excuses in india there is no university by the name of serampur university but 
congre people in congregational churches they despise each other and therefore they glorify a fake university please use right to information rt rti and ask ugc where there is any university in india known as serampur university because in india only ugc can approve universities they will immediately tell you that no we have not approved any university by that name and please remember from the time india became a republic and from the time ugc was formed ugc and only ugc can approve an institution as a university and most universities tend to be approved by naac there is no university approved by ugc or naac in india known as serampur university and they don't issue degrees saying it is a degree brethren most of the guilty people are brethren and pentecostals brethren who have a degree they cannot tolerate another brethren with a theological degree and they have they say i have a degree from serampur university pentecostals almost every pentecostal pastor takes pride in writing i have a degree from serampur university and often i ask where is show me that degree man if i say that i have a degree from jivaji university i will show it to you you show it to me i have had many experiences where one brother and teacher or other comes and says you have a theological degree isn't it i have a degree from serampur university some times ago a fellow came to me and said i have a bd from serampur university it is more valuable than mth issued by brother and bible institute and i would always say hey that is so wonderful but let's do one thing you show me your degree where it says serampur university ha 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 as soon as possible i will bring it and the fellow disappeared and for the last uh, uh, 23 years he has not spoken about his bd we brethren we despise each other we love suppressing our brethren to become big and because we despise each other we have repeatedly claimed that there is a, there is that a fake name is a university please remember in india no institution can claim to be a university without ugc approval and ugc has never approved any university by the, the name of serampur university do you know why india is a secular nation and the secular nation cannot approve or grant theological degrees and as i told you mysore university it does not give degree in theology it gives degree in christian studies and uh, external examiners are mostly hindus i know it first hand because i am a member of uh, the council on christian studies and uh, i go to bangalore when meetings are called to attend these meetings and please remember the the council on christian studies the majority of them are hindus not christians it is not theology india is a secular country it cannot issue degrees in theology but a fake name has become equivalent to university do you know why because i despise you you despise me and therefore we have created a nehushtan we worship that nehushtan you are god it is a fake god it doesn't exist and those of you who are listening to me please remember at least now we should stop despising each other and do you know what happened while we have been despising each other the theological radicals they have been taking over the brains of our children they have been capturing the brains of our children and here we are still fighting whether my degree is genuine your degree is genuine whether this bible school that bible school 
in fact i taught in a bible school where the vice president of the committee that means trust he always used to say we are issuing fake degrees because he despised the faculty members he despised the students we brothers as long as we despise each other theological radicals will take over let me give you the summary bible is the verbally inspired word of god it was inspired by the holy spirit the moment you stand up in the pulpit and say peter says this paul says this james says this you are questioning the divine authority of the bible this kind of expressions should stop we should stop glorifying nehushtans of this world we should once again reclaim our authority tregelus a brother and man he was deeply closely connected with uh, manuscripts of the bible i forgot to mention him w e wine one of the greatest scholars it is time for the brethren people to reclaim that there are some non brethren people but they are all from congregational churches which are no different they are identical to the brethren and i exhort all of you let us focus where our focus should be let us focus on the bible let us stand for defending the bible let us teach it as word of god not as paul's word or peter's word even our vocabulary has been corrupted by theological radicals and the results are obvious when our child comes and asks a question related to the reliability of the bible we have no answer when our child comes and says oh such and such person said uh, math mark was the first gospel to be written you ask your child go back and ask him for proof your child may say oh he has a degree from serampur university so you ask him a second question go and ask him to show his uh, degree from that so called university and then ask him to give proof that mark was the first gospel we have become cowards do you know why we have sold our birthright and why did we sell our birthright because we love attacking each other why do we love attacking each other because there is no hierarchy should a hierarchy be brought no but a change has to come and we have to understand that while the two cats were fighting over which piece of the butter goes to them the monkey was eating it meeting the whole piece of butter i hope you know that story i thank god that he enabled me to cover these subjects in the last 14 classes lord willing in our next class we will go to bible interpretation assignment okay here is an assignment why don't we teach sermon on the mount in brethren churches sermon on the mount is such a fantastic collection of uh, teachings why we don't teach it in the assemblies any idea i would love to have answers please post in bta group so that everybody can see it uh, don't feel there is no if you are in uh, if you make an error nothing to feel insulted or humiliated because uh, we all make mistakes that is how we learn so why don't we teach sermon on the mount in the assemblies something which even a person like mahatma gandhi loved very much please start posting uh, answers in the bta group one more assignment can you find at least five verses in the bible where the bible interprets itself i'll give you an example when the lord gave the parable of the seeds disciples wanted to know what the meaning is and then the lord makes it very clear what the meaning is now don't quote that because i already quoted it 
uh, this way, can you find five verses where the Bible interpret, interprets itself? I know there are many enterprising students here. Please try to post in the BTA group. If you are not in BTA group, uh, please write to me. I will add you. God bless you. Dear friends, I am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He would love to get your questions. Please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you. Please post only one question at a time, and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.